So, dear audience, welcome. Uh, my name is Mariangela Pellegrini. I work for DRN Euro Brunetta's Patients and Education Program Manager. And um, it's my great pleasure to invite all of you on behalf of DRN to this uh, webinar program for patients and their family tackling sickle cell disease. Um, as you may know, the topic of this uh, webinar program, because it's a program that consists in 11 webinar sessions, have been chosen by the patient's community uh, itself, because we um, circulate a survey asking which educational topic they would like to discover and having more information and genetic counseling is one of those topics chosen by patients. Um, this is the seventh uh, session as said of a cycle of a comprehensive program. And um, today we are going to talk as said about uh, genetic counseling. With us, there is the Dr. Celeste Bento, who is a molecular geneticist, and she's also the coordinator of the congenital red blood cell disease laboratory at the hospital in uh, Coimbra in Portugal, and of course, an ERN Eurobronet uh, member. Her areas of interest are, of course, red blood cell disorder and hemoglobinopathies. And she's also very involved with patients' advocate. I myself, she always uh, help us when we uh, create or coordinate new projects for patients and with patients. And indeed, she's a member of the board of the Portuguese Association for Patients with Hemoglobinopathies, that I cannot say it in Portuguese. <laughs> Acronym is APPDH, H, that is like patients with sickle cell disease, Portuguese patients with sickle cell disease. Celeste will tell us how it is named in uh, Portuguese. So, Celeste, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Maria Angela, for the presentation. And I'm going to tell the, the name of the Portuguese association is. Associação Portuguesa de Pais e Doentes com Hemoglobinopatias. So it's not, <laughs> it's not only for sickle cell disease, it's for all the hemoglobinopathies. Okay, uh, first I would like to thank you for inviting me to come here and speak. It's a pleasure to speak for the patients and I hope to, to, that they understand me. I try to explain. Uh, sorry, Celeste, we lost you for a moment. Okay. No. No, yes. I am Great. here. Yes. Okay. Uh, so it's a pleasure to be here. I'm going to talk about genetic counseling. And I'm not able. Uh, yes. Here are the rules. I don't know if you want to say the rules, Maria Angela. And but... um, yes, I can tell them because I forgot to tell them. So thank you. The PowerPoint is not uh, scrolling. So maybe I can suggest to share it as sharing the screen um, and not the sharing the PowerPoint because it's uh, easier. You are, not, you are not looking to the second slide? No. It's uh, stopped at the first and it's not in presentation mode. Oh. So maybe you can go out and entering. Yes, I will say sharing the screen is better. And in the mail while, yes, I forgot to tell our house rules. Thank you for remembering me. So um, first of all, this session is recorded because the video will be available on YouTube and our e-learning platform. So. Of course, if you feel not comfortable with us, with this, uh, switch off your camera and um, then your microphone will be muted along all the presentation. But at the end of the presentation, there is the possibility to address the question. You can both write them in the chat or you will have the possibility at that moment to unmute and ask the question. Um, so it's still not in presentation mode. No? Uh, no, no. 
but you you can scroll them because we are able to see the slide yes. not in but it doesn't work for us maybe shall i, I share the powerpoint or if you can try again but sharing the screen not the power yes now yes, yes. but i can't yes now is it's it going. it's working it's yes yes okay, great <laughs> Great, thank you. So I have no conflicts to, in, to declare and I'm going to start. Okay, this is a webinar for patients. So I would like to know why you, why are you interested in genetic counseling for sickle cell diseases? Maybe because you are a carrier of hemoglobin C, S, that is a sickle cell trait, or maybe because you are a person with sickle cell disease or a family or, or a friend you have a family or a friend with sickle cell disorder, or you can be a couple at risk for sickle cell disease. Or maybe you, you don't know if you are a carrier or no, you are a, a young people that wants to know if you are a carrier of sickle cell disease and you want to know how to be tested, or just you want to learn more about genetics of sickle cell disorders. Okay. And this webinar on genetic counseling, I hope that at the end of this webinar, you will be able to understand the genetic basis and pattern of inheritance of sickle cell disease, understand how and who should be diagnosed or tested for sickle cell trait, trait and be aware of the importance of identification of couples at risk for sickle cell disease and their options. Okay, and by the definition, what is sickle cell disease? Sickle cell disease is a genetic disorder, you know, that affects the red blood cells, the erythrocyte, causing them to become sickle or crescent shape, or like someone said, like a half moon. The erythrocyte, the normal erythrocyte or the healthy red blood cells are round shaped. They are very beautiful, as you can see in this figure. And they move through small blood vessels to carry oxygen to all parts of the body. The, the role of the red blood cell is to carry oxygen to the, to the body. And when you have sickle cell disorders, what happens? The red blood cells that work very well. They, they are sick and the, the sickle cells die early which causes anemia. And also when they travel through small blood, small blood vessels, they get stuck and clog the blood flow. And this causes strong pain and other serious complications, such as infections, acute cast syndrome and stroke. So you already know, sickle cell disease is a severe, a severe disorder. Okay. Let's start with the red blood cell. Red blood cell is a small cell, is one of the components of the blood. Without nucleus, this cell has only three major components. One of them is the membrane. It's a complex of proteins. And the, the role of the membrane is give shape of the red blood cell and the flexibility. The red blood cell have also enzymes to do the energy and maintain the, the balance of the red blood cells. But the main component of the red blood cell is hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is a protein that carries oxygen. And in fact, okay, sickle cell is a problem of the red blood cell. But, but who is the culprit? The membrane, the enzymes? No, is the, of course, hemoglobin. The problem is in hemoglobin. So let's see what is hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is a molecule made of hemoglobin chains, four chains of hemoglobin equal two by two. Two of them are alpha chains and two of them are non-alpha chains. In normal adults, the main form of hemoglobin is hemoglobin A. And the hemoglobin A 
is composed by two alpha chains and two beta chains. Another form of hemoglobin that occur in the fetus is hemoglobin F. Hemoglobin F is made of alpha chains, but instead of beta, they have gamma, is alpha 2, gamma 2. When you have a sickle hemoglobin, you have hemoglobin S. You don't have the normal hemoglobin A, but you have hemoglobin S. And the hemoglobin S is composed by two alpha chains and two abnormal beta chains that we call beta S. So in all of these hemoglobins, that, as you can see, the alpha chain is normal, is the same. The difference is in the beta chains. So we have here the second culprit is the beta, are the beta chains. The beta chains are proteins. And like proteins, they must be synthesized by genes. And the gene that is responsible for the synthesis of beta globin gene is the HBB gene. OK. And all the problems are, in fact, in the HBB gene. And what is the HBB gene? It's located in chromosome 11. And it's in a part of the chromosome that uh, comprises a family of genes that are associated with the, the production of hemoglobin. Here you have the genes for gamma, the, the chains of the fetal hemoglobin. The gene, the gene for a, a minor form hemoglobin, it's called hemoglobin A2, and the HBB gene for the beta chains. And what is a gene? A gene is a part of the DNA, and it's made with a lot of a successive sequence of letters of that we call nucleotides. They are nucleotides and have only four different nucleotides. Nucleotides A, C, G, and T. Only four letters in sequence that made a gene and that have all the information to make a protein. And here is represented the gene, the HBB gene, and what happens in the hemoglobin S. In this large amount of letters, uh, an A is changed by a T. And only this makes the sickle cell disease. It's, so you have in hemoglobin A, the normal gene, the HBB, and at, in the 20 nucleotide, you have an A. It's normal. When you have hemoglobin S, it's because in the HBB gene, in the 20 position, instead of an A, you have a T. So in, in the protein, you have an amino acid. And instead of glutamine in position set, seven, sorry, you have a valine. And this is what makes the hemoglobin S. OK, I think now you can understand the genetic basis of the sickle cell. It's in a mutation in the HBB gene, but you have to understand the pattern of inheritance. OK, human cell contains 23 pairs of chromosomes. Here they are represented. 22 of them are equal and they are called autosomes, and two of them are the sex chromosomes. In these pairs, when in each of the pairs, one chromosome is inherited from the mother, and the other chromosome is inherited from the father. In the case of sickle cell disease, or HBB gene, as I said, is located in chromosome 11. So, we have one HBB gene inherited from the mother and another HBB gene inherited from the father. Here, I represent the HBB gene inherited from the mother in pink and the, the paternal in blue, just to understand. And here are the different forms that you can have. OK, in this case, the HBB gene is normal. You have the A. And in this case, also, 
the HBB gene inherited from the father is normal. So this individual is homozygous normal. When both of the genes are equal, we say they are homozygous. And it's not homozygous normal, we will have only hemoglobin A. In this case, this individual inherited from the mother a mutated gene and from the father a normal gene. And is the same, I put it in duplicate, but is exactly the same if the mutated gene is inherited from the father or from the mother. The result is the same. You have an heterozygous with both hemoglobin A and hemoglobin S. These individuals are normal. They don't have sickle cell disease. In this case, this individual in, in, in inherited the mutated allele from the mother and the mutated from the father. Both of the, of the genes have the mutation is homozygous, homozygous for hemoglobin S or SS. So it's a sickle cell disease. Mm -hmm. When a disease must have the two genes, the two chromosomes mutated to, to become a disorder, we said that it is autosomic, recessive, autosomic, because in, is in one of the 22 chromosomes that are equal, and recessive because it needs that the two genes are mutated to have the disease. But the sickle cell disease is not made only by homozygous hemoglobin S. There can be other combinations because one of the genes can have the hemoglobin S. In, in all the cases, hemoglobin S must be present in one of the genes, but in the other genes, we can have different conditions. In this case, I will present a condition when the gene doesn't work. There are no production of beta ch chains in this gene. It's a condition called beta thalassemia. In this case, this individual have one chromosome inherited, one of the chromosomes inherited the hemoglobin S gene, and the other inherited a, a gene for hemoglobin C. In this case, you have hemoglobin D, in this case, hemoglobin E. They are different forms of hemoglobins, but the result is the same. These individuals have sickle cell disease. And there are other combinations of hemoglobins that I'm not going to talk because there are a lot of them. Uh, here are represented only the most frequent. So I hope that now you will already understand genetic basis and the pattern of inheritance of sickle cell disease that is a recessive disorder. And now let's go. Let's go to see who and how should be done the diagnosis of sickle cell trait. Okay, they, uh, every people in the world can, can be a carrier of hemoglobinopathy because the carriers are normal persons without symptoms, without a disease. So to do the, the, the test of the, the carriers, you must do both two, two different tests and a hemogram, always necessary, hemoglobin S, usually have normal hematological parameters, usually, but sometimes they can have anemia and hypochromic microcytic RBC, red blood cells. This means that the red blood cells are shorter and without color. And you, you must do also an hemoglobin study with quantification and identification of the hemoglobin variant. Sorry. Okay, and how can be done the, the hemoglobin study? With an HPLC, we, you, we, we can see the different uh, fractions of hemoglobin that you have in your blood. Usually you only, have, you, you only have hemoglobin A, but if you have an hemoglobin S, you can see it by HPLC, or you can use another methodology 
that is capillary electrophoresis, when it's also possible to see hemoglobin S. And here is an old technology, but still working, called isoelectric focusing, that it's also very good to separate between hemoglobin S and hemoglobin A. But as I said, you must detect not only the hemoglobin S carriers, but also the carriers of the other uh, diseases like the beta thalassemia. And to carry the bet to detect the beta thalassemia carriers, you need to do a hemogram because carriers of beta thalassemia can have normal or no low M hemoglobin levels, but have always a low MCV and MCH. And also the hemoglobin A2, the, the small fraction of hemoglobin, must be below 2, through above 3.5%, sorry. And here you have the uh, one H H HPLC with a high value of hemoglobin. So it's to detect the beta thalassemia carriers. But you can do the same to detect other variants like hemoglobin D, hemoglobin C, all of them have different patterns in the, in the HPLC. There are sometimes variants that are silent in the HPLC and you, have, you, you must do molecular studies. So who should be tested? Sickle cell tra trait is one of the most common hemoglobin mutations in the world because of its protective effects against mal malaria. So here you have the world map and the, the prevalence of hemoglobin S is coincidence, coincident with the prevalence of malaria. So you look at this map and you can say, okay, so I only have to test the people from these areas of the world. But first, there are lots of immigration and maybe the, the map, it's not like this anymore. But at the same time, you have all other hemoglobinopathies let, like the beta thalassemia. And here you have the distribution of the beta tal in the world. And as you can see, it's almost all the world, except Africa, or in uh, some regions in Africa, where hemoglobin S is frequent. So you have to test all the world. And the, the screening should be universal for all the people and should be done at the age of 13 to 18 years old or at the preconception counseling. So now you know how and who should be tested. And now let's see what happens with the couples at risk for SCD. You, you, you have done the, the test and you know that you are a carrier. Now, what can you do? The the, uh, people with a trait, people with, that are heterozygous for hemoglobin S doesn't have symptoms, they are healthy, but they can pass the trait for the, the ch their children. So when you start planning to have a child, your partner should be tested for hemoglobin S and other hemoglobinopathies. So the tests that I talked before, hem hem hemogram and uh, hemoglobin uh, study must be done. Okay, and what are the options? Both of them are carriers. So you are a carrier, you are AS, and your partner do the study and is normal without hemoglobin S. So is a couple without risk. What, what can happen is that you have children like you, carriers, but without risk. Or your partner is also an AS carrier or a carrier with one of the other mutations, beta thalassemia or hemoglobin D, and you are a couple at risk. One in four of your children can have sickle cell disorder. But if you are not a carrier, but you already have, you have sickle cell disorder. So you are like this, you are homozygous, yes, yes. Okay, you have, 
your partner could be AA, normal, without, without hemoglobin S. So there is no problem. All, all your children will be carriers of hemoglobin S, but without problem. Or your partner is also a carrier of hemoglobin S. In this case, of the probability of for in each pregnancy is that of, of your children are homozygous for hemoglobin S, have the risk to have the disease. Okay. And in this case, sorry. If you are at risk to have the disease, what are your options? You are a couple at, at risk and you want to have children. What are your options? You, have, you want to have healthy children or not? You can, you can adopt a child or you can do a, a preconception uh, test. Before you, you got pregnant, you have the possibility to do in vitro fertilization with pre-implantation genetic screening. So it's a fertilization method when the embryos are taken from the mother, fertilize, fertilize and then screened for sickle cell. So the different embryos are screened for sickle cell with molecular methodologies and the embryos that do not have the, the sickle cell disorder are selected and implemented again in the mother to, to, to give the rise of a child. Or you can, if you are already pregnant, you can do a prenatal diagnosis. A prenatal diagnosis can, is done in the first weeks of the pregnancy, can be done by amniocentesis or chordocentesis. And it's a study when a sample of blood of the fetus, if it was in the chordocentesis, or a sample of amniotic fluid in the amniocentesis is taken and the, the DNA of the fetus is extracted from this, this sample. And after this, uh, with molecular technologies like PCR and Sanger, we detect if the mutations of the, of the parents are present in the fetus, if the fetus is normal of, or if, if the fetus is sickle cell disorder. Okay. I, here is a resume of the options you have when you, you are a couple with a, at, when you are a couple at risk. It, this is a, a reproductive decision making, making tree that uh, I saw in, uh, in, a, in a paper from Pecker published in Blood in 2018. And what happens is if uh, if you are a couple at, of uh, to risk, if you if you are a woman, and if uh, you are a carrier of hemoglobin S, you, if you are or if you are not pregnant yet, you have to. You can decide, or you don't want to be pregnant, or yes, you want to be pregnant. You want to have a, ch a child. In in case you want to have a child, as I said, you have to test your partner. You have to do an hemoglobin electrophoresis, but also in an hemogram. And if both of them are at risk for a sickle cell disorder, you have to then do molecular studies to confirm the mutations. So if it was a couple of two risk, if it was not, okay, no problem. You can continue with the pregnancy. But if you are, as I said, you can do the pre-implantation test Yes, okay, you can do this. You can, you are referred to a reproductive endocrinology or no, you don't want to do this, but you want to do the amniocentesis for fetal diagnosis. Yes, you want to do the, 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 sick, the sickle cell test, the prenatal diagnosis, and it's negative. Perfect, you can continue with the pregnancy. But if you do the amniocentesis, and if it was positive, you have two options, two options. Or 
continue continue with, with the pregnancy. And in this case, it's better you talk with the prenatal pediatric hematology to because you are going to have a, a baby with sickle cell disease, or you don't want to continue with pregnancy, and you, you should go to a gynecology to interrupt the pregnancy. You have another option here because you can you you, you can opt for not to do the pre-implantation test nor the amniocentesis test. So we advise you to screen the newborn because you could have a baby with sickle cell disease and it's better that we know when he borns. It's possible to screw the newborn, the newborn to see if, he's, uh, if, if he has a disease or not. Okay, and it's the same here. If you are already pregnant, it's the same. You have to study your partner. You have less time, but you have to study your partner. And if you are at risk for SCD, you have the option for a prenatal diagnosis. So at the end, I think that you you are now you know now what are op your options. But I have to advise you that if you need genetic counseling, you should consult your doctor and the genetic counselor because only, only they know your condition and could give you the best advice. And the, as a take-home message, I would like to say that SCD is a recessive disorder, but the carriers can be identified with an easy and cheap hemoglobin study. If you are at a reproductive age, ask your daughter to do the test. It's easy. And a couple of at risk for SCD have different options to make the right decision. It, it, is, it, always be a, it will always be a personal choice, but it's important to be informed. Okay, and that's all. And now, thank you for your, your attention. Here is my email if you have questions at the end of the after this presentation. And I would like to ask Mary Angela because I have a small video that I could, I would like to.
okay i hope you enjoy the video um so i would open now the question and answering session um and as said you can both write in the chat i've seen people are already writing so we'll go through the question but you can also unmute yourself and take part to the debate if you prefer um, so I will start saying that I have received in private very good feedback on your presentation, uh, Celeste, because they say it's very clear and um, such a clear presentation and I really would echo the same. I think many patients will really benefit also from the, the video we are going to share, so thank you very much for this. I go from to the first comment or question, I don't know, I will read it with you. I have interacted with some sickle cell carriers who experience the same symptoms, crisis and complication like those of us with sickle cell anemia. Before, I also thought sickle cell carrier are asymptomatic. You finished? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's, it's a comment, yeah. It's not mm -hmm. it's Okay. Uh, yes, it's true. It's I. I also have this problem because it's true that the sickle cell carriers are asymptomatic and are healthy, but they can have other conditions. And like any 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 other people that have different conditions, they can have they can have they can have a sickle cell threat with everything else. They can have a, a they they can be carriers for a membrane disorder or an enzyme disorder and red blood cell enzyme disorder, then goes to aggravate the phenotype, and in fact what you see now we can see uh, with people that work with molecular genetics, is that there are lots of mutations in different genes. In the past we only saw the, the mutations in the genes that we are studying, like the HBB gene, but now with the NGS, we study a lot of genes. In, in fact, there are people that have mutations in different genes. And I think that these carriers, the problem with these carriers that have symptoms is because they should have another mutation in another gene, maybe one, one gene of the, of the membrane of the red blood cell, or one gene of the enzymes, and the, the two mutations combined aggravate the, the phenotype of, C, of the sickle cell. But this, this is only a suspicion, not a confirmation, but that's a study that I think will be done in, in the future because, in fact, there are lots of carriers now that present with symptoms. I don't Thank know if I much. ask. Yeah, Mary, yeah. Uh, I've seen one comment from the same person that raised the, the comment before. Um, he said, I will want to talk about the carriers with symptoms. Then I have, uh, thanks Dr. Bento. My colleagues and I are in the process of developing an HB Opathies genetic counseling service. Uh, hemoglobinopathy, sorry, genetic counseling service. As you rightly said, with people having partners from across the world, it is now even more likely to see pregnancy that could be combined heterozygous for different hemoglobinopathies alleles. Can you recommend any resources as to how to predict the phenotype severity of such combination that might even be unreported so far in the literature. Yes, I have the same problem. <laughs> because now we see so many different mutations and it's not easy to, 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 to know the result of the combination of the mutations. But there are, you can go to the ClinVar, the ClinVar uh, can give you the, 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 the significance of the, of the of the mutations, I think Ethernet is preparing. Uh, I don't know if you know Ethernet. Uh, it was in my slides because of the Ethernet maps, but the Ethernet 
has a lot of uh, information about hemoglobinopathies and they are preparing uh, one for phenotype. So it, it will be a, a good tool in the future to know the phenotype. But for the other cases, it's, it's, uh, you have to, to, to talk with the doctors, with different people we, working in the area because there are no one tool that answer all the questions. Thank you. Um, so I will go through the other question. Can you simply ask your doctor, or GP, your family doctor to be tested for sickle because there is sickle cell in your family? What if they are not willing to do it? Okay, Miriam. I think the doctors will say yes. I, don't, I, I can't imagine a, a doctor saying no, he, mostly in the case that there is a, a carrier in the family, but there are no these tests outside the, the clinical. There are no these tests in the pharmacy. It could be a, a good idea to sell this kind of tests in, uh, the, in, in the, it could be done, but no, uh, the only possibility now is through your doctor to do the test. And at least in Portugal, but I think in the rest of the world is the same. Uh, I am the youngest of four children, the only one uh, uh, with sickle cell. One of the other um, is HPA, adult children who is sickle, has sickle cell. This shouldn't be possible according to all the presentation and discussion I had on this. Is there an explain explanation or will it be a wrong test result? Okay. Uh, there is always an explanation. Uh, the, the, the father is not a carrier of hemoglobin S. It's the, the most probable because if the, if the mother is hemoglobin A, you, you, know, you know for sure that mother is hemoglobin A or she's a carrier. She, she, she can be normal, but she can be a carrier, A and S, one, one of the hypotheses. The other is that the father, the father can be a carrier or also it can be a wrong test, but I think that you have also repeated it. I don't know. It's if I can speak quickly, hi Celeste. Yes. Thank oh, you very much. Hi, Miriam. This is something that I have asked multiple uh, doctors. I never had a clear answer on that. And because it's not myself, uh, I have recommended repeat repeating the test because there are multiple tests. The result was always the same. Neither the father or the mother are carriers. So I would say they are clean. And yet one of the children is a carrier, which is intriguing. <laughs> so, uh, but, but the tests are a bit older, uh, but, but it is a fact. So I was just asking if there is a possibility that, I don't know, some possibility, but okay. Uh, Mir Miriam, the only, the only thing if I can say to you is if you want to send me the three blood samples from the mother, the father and the child, I can do the test and confirm it, but in our, in my experience, it's almost impossible. Okay. But okay, in genetic, I, I also have learned that we never say impossible because everything is possible. So, <laughs> okay. but it's a very strange ca case. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So I think David would love to add something on the previously discussion. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. perfectly. Go okay. ahead. Yes. I commented about uh, carriers having the same symptoms. Now, I am sickle cell anemia, hemoglobin SS. I published a book about my experience and then some scientific information in September 2020. And a sickle cell carrier, somebody that has hemoglobin AS, read the book and reached out to me. Her name is Mwakwe Miller. She is in the UK, I'm from Nigeria, I work in Saudi Arabia. And she reached out to me that she read my book and everything I described in my book are the things she has experienced. Now in the book, I described about my experience with PICA, my experience with preapism, with chronic fatigue syndrome, with chronic leg ulcer, 
pain crisis and some other conditions with sickle cell, complication with sickle cell disorder. And I told, I was arguing with her that it's not possible because right from, I'm a doctor, right from medical school, what I was taught is that as carrier, you are asymptomatic. You don't get to have the same symptoms or crisis or complications. But she said, no, that she's carrier. She has done a lot of tests from the doctors in the UK and has shown that she's still a carrier, but she still have those uh, crisis. At times when she go to complain about crisis, at times when she go to complain about some of the complications and they don't get to listen to her. So I, I was like, okay, so if you are experiencing this thing, definitely it is the same thing. Because I never knew before then that carriers also experience the same thing. Those of us that have sickle cell anemia experience. So she now started a foundation, uh, is a symptomatic sickle cell treat, which reached out to a lot of people who have sickle cell treats to speak out. And that's how I got to know that in Zambia, Nigeria, and different parts of the world, there are people that are just sickle cell carriers and they have the same complications, avascular necrosis. Uh, in fact, this lady had stroke in uh, 2021 because stroke is a risk to sickle cell. Uh, sickle cell disorder can cause stroke. You know, information about sickle cell disorder uh, is evolving, or will I say, sickle, information about sickle cell disorder is scanty because. Yeah, sickle cell disorder, though is the earliest genetic disorder to be identified globally, it is still the least funded and the least researched. Even from my own experience, right from when I was in medical school, I got to know and I was taught that as a sickle cell uh, anemic, if you have sickle cell anemia, the risk of stroke is only in children. But last year, I'm, I'm 45 years old, last year I did two CT scan and MRI of the head, and it showed that I have silent stroke. I've never had before that somebody with sickle cell, adults that have sickle cell anemia can have a risk of stroke. So a lot of things about sickle cell disorder that we knew, I think is like an incomplete information. Then I had to interact with other people. I interacted with an ophthalmologist in Nigeria above 60. And she said, yes, that she has met people that have sickle cell freight who presented with the same pain crisis and other complications that those of us that have sickle cell anemia. So since then, I've started changing my opinion and I've started listening to a lot of people. In fact, some of the people that from, from Zambia, when they described their experience, and I was at a forum, a Zoom a conference, some of them said they went to the hospital to present with pain crisis, but the only thing the doctors gave them was parastamol or ibuprofen did not place them on any medication, did not place them on IV fluid, and they were growing in pain. And the doctors insisted that if you are treat, you cannot have those crises, that they are just complaining of other things. And they had to go back home. And when I had many of them speak, I said that there are more than 10 that had had experiences presenting in the hospital, and the doctors or the health workers did not listen to them, even though they had to do it repeated cycling tests or hemoglobin electrophoresis tests or other forms of tests to confirm that they are sickle cell disorder. And they this test confirmed that they just have sickle cell trait, but yet they have the same symptoms and complications. So since then, I've started changing my opinion about things we know regarding sickle cell disorder, since it's as if there's so many things about sickle cell disorder that we do not know. This same lady, when I discussed about my experience with chronic fatigue syndrome, she also described having the same symptoms. WHO had a criteria of inclusive criteria to describe chronic fatigue syndrome. And if you check online, you discover any medical journal, you discover that even though there are limited information concerning chronic fatigue syndrome, scarcely will you see any medical journal or literature that says chronic fatigue syndrome or cause in people with sickle cell disorder. But when I had to interact with a lot of people with sickle cell disorder that are held out all over the world, most of them confirm that they have chronic fatigue syndrome and that they make the same pattern is that you presented in the hospital and you describe your uh, symptoms or the manifestations and the doctor thinks you are just joking or you are just lying and they don't get to listen. So I think we need to be open to understand more about sickle cell disorder because if you are supposed to work on only what we knew in the past, then it seems as if we may not know as much as possible as regarding sickle cell disorder. Thank you. Thank you, David. I think I, <laughs> it's very complicated, uh, but okay, uh, you are right. 
and the problem is because in fact sickle cell disease, disease continues to 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 be a silent disorder it's very frequent in the world but it's a silent disorder and that's why this kind of web webinars and the lots the meetings and are very important to disseminate the information and the more and more studies are needed to understand all of these different conditions that appear now. Thank you for your your, so your see, testimony. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. I see Beverly raising hands. You can unmute and have the floor. And I will see looking the hour will be the last um, interaction. Can you hear us, Beverly? Yes, I can. Thank right. you so much. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yes. Thank you. Yes, I really appreciate the last speaker speaking. Um, I think he kind of talked about a lot of things that I wanted to say, but one of the things that I wanted to ask was um, how much of it, because I, I, I've come to understand that for some of the patients, misdiagnosis is also an issue where depending on the S content or the ACE content, uh, people are, are diagnosed as traits when they truly have sickle cell disease. I don't know how much of that you've seen and observed. And if we're missing something in terms of another sickle cell uh, gene that, you know, because I know we have S, we have C, we have E, you know, are we missing something with a lot of these uh, sickle cell um, 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 patients with, uh, no, sorry, I would say traits, people with traits um, that are having the symptoms compared to those. Is there any study going on, a trial going on to compare what's going on in that area? Yes. Uh, the, the, uh, the hemoglobin gene, the HBB gene, is a, a very small gene and is easy, very easy to study. So the, the these carriers of hemoglobin S for sure don't have another. If they are studied at molecular level, they don't have not, nothing in the in the HBB gene if they are well studied. But as I said, maybe they have mutations in other genes, other genes in the red blood cells that are interacting with the hemoglobin S. Uh, there are studies in yes, there are studies in ongoing, but at the moment we don't have any 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 date for this. What happens sometimes is that, but I have seen one case on only in, in my life, and it's a very, very rare condition, is that the carriers of hemoglobin S lose the other gene, lose, is because for different mechanisms, the other gene becomes inactive or becomes identical to the hemoglobin S gene, and the, the person becomes a, a beta tau major. If you, it, I have one one case in my experience, but it it was a carrier, in a, a carrier in the beginning that at the end it was a beta tau major, but it's not frequent. And for sure, it's not what happened with this beta tau. Uh, hemoglobin S trait that F symptoms must, must be other conditions, but we don't know what they are yet. I hope I have, you have the, the answer. Yes, she confirmed in the chat. Thank you very much. So please, I, I would like to know if G6PD deficiency is an hemoglobinopathy. No, hemoglobinopathy refers to disorders of the hemoglobin, and G6PD is a disorder of the enzymes, like I told in the beginning, the enzymes of the red blood cell. But sometimes, as G6PD is so frequent also in Africa as hemoglobin S, sometimes they, they, they join both together, but it's not a hemoglobinopathy. Great. Thank you very much. So as I was saying, it has been a really great debate and session. Thank you very much, Celeste, Thank for you, being Angela. with us and for sharing your time and expertise.
It has been a very clear and comprehensive presentation. Also, thank to all the audience for having been with us and raised all these important points and bringing testimonies. We really appreciate that. So I hope to see uh, you on the 17th of October for the next uh, session. And uh, well, that's it. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.